I'm going to try my best to keep all the info here short and to the point. Here is 10 different Blender camera animation tips. If you guys enjoy, like, subscribe, and check out my website down below if you're interested in After Effects or Blender plugins. So tip number one is the video game method or the real-time walkthrough method. We'll start by clicking Shift A and adding in a camera. I'll split my view by dragging in a new window from the top left, and then I'm going to go up to the View tab, and then scroll down to Navigation, and then go to Walk Navigation. So now you can use WASD, just like in a video game, to walk or fly around your scene. So let's do this with our camera animation. We're going to go into our camera view. We're going to click this button down here to set up auto keying. And then we're going to go again to view, navigation, walk navigation. We're going to click play. And then we can just click WASD to walk around and it's going to create those keyframes in real time. So here's what that looks like. It's very choppy. So what we're going to do is select all the keyframes, go into our graph editor again. Here's the keyframes we created. Let's go over to key, all the way down to smooth, and then we can choose to smooth the keyframes. Now you see if I click Alt S, the normal smooth keyframe is Alt O. So you can just keep clicking Alt O until these keyframes are a lot more smooth. If there's any little jitters like this, and you see here's that little gap, we can just click Shift Alt O to sample the keyframes and fill in any of those gaps and then Alt O again, just to smooth that out. And there you go, some nice smooth camera animation with some custom control. So here is a similar method for real-time camera control. This time we're gonna get the full cinematographer experience by syncing up our 3D Blender cameras with our phone. There's a couple of phone apps which allow you to do this. I like to use Virtue Camera. I think it is $5 on the App Store. There should be some free alternatives. I'll look into them and put them on the screen here if I do find them. But either way, here's how to set it up. First, I'm gonna go to the Virtue Cam website and download their Blender add-on. I'm on Windows, so I'll download this version here. Once you've done that, go into Blender and you want to go to edit and preferences and then click install under the add-on section find that zip folder that you just downloaded from VirtuCam. once that's in there make sure it's checked on in your add-ons and then you can come over here to the far right and expand this little window scroll down to find the VirtuCam add-on and then click this button here to start the connection now we need to set up our phone app to actually get this synced up so i'll download this from the app store and fire it up on my phone there's a nifty little feature here to actually set up the connection with a QR code. So all I have to do is click the QR code option here and just point my camera at my computer screen and we are all synced up and ready to go. So now you can select the camera that you'd like to take control of in Blender. And then we can also click in the top right this linked button to now initialize the tracking system. I just need to move my phone left and right a little bit and it'll lock on. Now I am just moving my phone and controlling the camera. And you see how smooth it is. You can change that smooth factor over here on the left. So if I put it all the way down, I can have this sort of like in your face, no smooth, would look pretty cool with motion blur. I can put the position scale up. So if I want to barely move my phone forward, I can have the camera move forward like this. Or if I don't want to move around a lot, I can put this all the way down. And now I'm moving my camera, but we're barely moving. So I'll put that in between. You can also change the focal length, which is pretty cool. So if you want some zooms or something like that, and now I can just click this record button and start recording straight from my phone. Click play. And now we have our custom movement using an app. So if you're working on animation, you really want to get personalized with things. This is a super cool method. Now you see here, we're having a little bit of blurring issues when we get close. So what I'm going to do here with our empty, I'm going to select my character, click tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to select a vertex where I want the focus to always stay locked onto. So right here, then I can hold down control and select my focus empty up here in the top right. Once you've done that, you go up to the vertex tab over here, go down to make vertex parent, and then you just click again. So I can take the empty and just sort of reposition it like that. And now it's going to stay perfectly tracked onto the surface. I think this is a bit more reliable of a method uh, than something like shrink wrap, especially if there's a ton of different movement going on here. And now you can see everything is staying within focus. All right, so my next two tips are going to involve camera constraints. There's a ton of awesome things you can do with constraints, whether that's just for time saving or for creating cool shots like this. 
So everything is pretty cluttered right now. Let's go ahead and just delete all of these cameras and different things we have going on here so that we can start from scratch. The first camera constraint will be the follow path constraint. So we're going to click shift a and add in another new camera here. Whenever you're using these constraints or following a path, I recommend you just keep the camera default at the world origin here. So we'll leave the camera alone instead of keyframing the camera itself. We're instead just going to click shift a and add in a Bezier curve. You can either go with your own custom path or you can just do something like like a circle like I was showing before it works the same so let's do the custom path first we'll go to curve bezier and then you want to click tab to go into edit mode now once you're in edit mode you can select any of these vertices here and just click e to extrude and essentially just set up your own path for how you want the camera to behave you can go for some crazy loops like this if you want you can also grab any of these parts of the spline and sort of smooth them out like this just by grabbing the handles so that should be pretty nice. Once you have your Bezier curve, let's go back and select our tutorial camera right here. And this time we're going to go down to our constraints and we're going to add in a follow path constraint. So for the target, we're going to select that Bezier curve that we just set up. And you see, because we already have this camera at the world origin, it's automatically going to pop to the very first vertice here of the Bezier curve, which is nice. If we were to undo this and say, have like the camera right here, whenever you set your target, you see it's already offset. So just keep this default. If you did move it around, you can just go to your object properties, set all the location to zero, and then go back and set that follow path. So with the Bezier curve, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just want to change this offset slider and you see it'll perfectly follow our path. Now we're going to add in our next tip here, which is our second constraint, and that is the track to constraint. So with this, I recommend you create an empty. So you see I have an empty here. We'll just redo that process. I'll click Shift A. We'll go and create an empty empty plane axis, it doesn't matter. I like to click S and just scale this up so I can see it a bit better. And then again, I'll click G and Z and just position this exactly where I want the camera to be pointing. Let's rename this to camera spline focus. Let's reselect our camera here and then under the track to constraint, we'll just find that empty that we just set up and easy as that. Now, if we select this camera here and we go to our camera view, and then again, go to your constraints and your offset. We have this nice custom animation all set up with the spline. This is way less time consuming than if you were trying to do this by yourself. You see, you can create some really cool stuff. Even if you go off the path, kind of have this flying effect going on. It's extremely easy to change this by, again, going to edit mode. You can just change exactly the path that you want or the position. So let's just set a little keyframe. So we'll start right here. Again, we're keyframing the offset slider under follow path constraint. We'll go about 100 frames. And we'll just crank this value until we have something like this. And there you go. Nice and smooth. All right. So this next trick is one of the more creative in the list. There's a lot of different uses for this. Uh, I always think of this scene from the movie Requiem for a Dream. If you've ever seen that, they use what's called a snorri cam, where it's essentially a mount uh, mounted to the person. And it gives you this really like in your face or first person view like you just saw there. We're going to start off in Mixamo right here. I'm just going to get a simple little uh, running animation. So something like this. Let's just go in place and let's add some frames and that's fine. All right. So let's download this. And the cool thing about this, again, you can test with other animations depending on whatever type of film you're making. So let's import in our animation and you can see there's still not a lot of frames. So let's just select the armature here. You can see all of our keyframes. Let's go over to the graph editor and I'll click N on my keyboard and I'll go to modifiers and we'll add in a cycles modifier just so that this loops all the way throughout the timeline. Now we can set up our camera. So we'll click shift A, add in our camera, and I like to just zero out all of the rotation to start. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. I, again, like to use the vertex parenting trick that I showed a little bit earlier. So let's select our character and click tab to go into edit mode and then select the area where we'd like to mount our camera. So for this one, let's just go with like the center of the chest. Then you can hold down control on your keyboard with that vertice selected and we can select the camera like this. And then we can just go over to the vertex section and scroll all the way down to make vertex parent and click OK. So now let's tab back into object mode and you can see this little line here for where this is parented. Let's just properly rotate this camera and then place it where we want. So we have something like this. Now let's go into the camera view. You can see because the camera is now parented, it's going to be within this stack with the armature. So let's go to the camera view and now for the cool snorri cam effect, let's go over to the camera properties here. So select our camera, click this little camera icon, and we change the focal length. 
Now you just want to play around with your perspective and your field of view until you get something that you like. So there is our first person running view. You can duplicate this, just mess around and make some fun little alterations. So let's switch to this camera here and I'm just going to rotate it around and find a perspective like this. You see, because we duplicated it, it's still moving with our character. Again, let's duplicate this one again. Just like that, we have three different parented views. Now our next step here, we're going to keep the same setup and we're just going to show you a little bit of camera look tricks. This one is going to be a fisheye lens. So let's switch to one of our camera settings like this one, for example. And for this, all you need to do is again, go to your camera settings and you want to change the type to panoramic. And you'll see if we switch the type from perspective to panoramic, nothing really happened. And that's because we are currently in EV. So if you want more control over the panoramic and if you want true fisheye, we can switch over to cycles. And then let's go back to our camera settings here. And now you're going to see this new option for panoramic type. Let's go over to our rendered view and you'll see now we're getting that automatic fisheye lens that you see in a lot of like skating videos. So let's add in a sun just so we can see our character better. There's also some of these other crazier options, uh, like if you want to get full distortion. I mean, look at what's going on here. There's also a mirror ball, which I think looks really cool. Gives you that really crazy stretch distortion and this really crazy, bizarre perspective. And another camera trick here. This one works better, in my opinion, when you have a 360 degree environment or you're walking through an interior or something like that. So for this one, very similar. We're going to go over to the camera options down here. Again, we're going to change from perspective over to panoramic. And this time we're going to use the equal rectangular. You can mess around with either of them. The normal equal, the normal equal rectangular. The normal equal rectangular is sort of like your 360 VR camera, which is also very cool. If we zoom in, you can see we get some crazy distortion on the edges, crazy things like this, where we're like zooming in and just getting this like super warped perspective. So this one is pretty cool if you want like a really trippy sort of view, or maybe if you're making like a VR video or something like that, you can see it almost zooms all the way into the bell, which is pretty cool. I might end up actually using this one. We're also pairing that with our track to and our follow path constraints, and that's allowing us to get those sort of crazy angles and movements as well. So tip number nine is two useful shortcuts that are going to really help with your animation. These don't really involve camera tricks, but in my opinion, they are very useful. So say we want to add in a new camera here. Let's click shift a add in our camera. And again, I'll delete all of this other clutter just so we don't get confused. I'll keep the empty in the center. So what I'm going to do is select this camera and say I'm just kind of looking around in my 3D view, looking for a cool angle that might make, looking for an angle that might make for a nice shot. Once you have your camera selected, I'm going to go up to edit and preferences, and we're going to go over to the key map section and just type in camera. And you want to find this one that says align camera to view by default. It's control alt numpad zero. I don't actually have, I'm using a mini keyboard, so I don't even have an, so I don't even have a numpad. So I'm just going to rebind that to control alt zero. So select your camera, make sure that the camera button right here is actually active. Navigate in your viewport to where you want to place the camera and then make sure you're just clicked inside this viewport window and click control alt numpad zero. That'll place your camera right where your active view is, which is extremely useful. If you're still trying to manually place your cameras, this is just going to save you a ton of time. This is just going to save you an a ton. This is just going to save you a ton of time. You can finally just use your navigation and your eye for finding places that you like to make nice shots. Also, if you're interested in plugins, I incorporated a lot of these useful little tricks into a Pi menu in my Director 3D Blender plugin. You just click Control Shift T to open my Pi menu. And then we have a line camera to view right there. Link down below if you want to check that out. There's a bunch of modular geometry node setups as well as 3D models, effects, a lighting studio and other useful stuff for Blender. Now, the second little shortcut, which is useful, and this is useful for moving around anything in Blender, not just cameras. Say, for example, I want to place another object exactly in this bell tower in 3D. So if I click Shift A, Cube, you know, I can click G and Z. Uh, I can click G and Y or just click G and try and struggle to position this exactly where I want it to be. Well, a much easier way to do this is just to find an object that's within that area you'd like to place the new object. So for here, you see I have an empty here. Maybe I want to place my cube where the empty is. I can select the cube. Shift select the empty or whatever other object you want to move the object to and then click shift S on my keyboard to bring up this Pi menu and then click selection to active much easier. Now this is exactly in place and I can just go like this and it's up in the bell tower. This is my go to method just for moving things around quickly. You see, I can select my cube here, shift select the plane, shift S 
selection to active and we're all ready to go. All right, guys, and for our last tip, I'm going to show you a more optimized way to manual keyframe. Sometimes it's better just to control things a bit more intricately, just to be able to zoom in on keyframes and create your own custom animation without using any of the other tips. So to do that, what we're going to need is just a camera and an empty. So we'll create our camera. I'm just going to zero out all of the rotation here and I'll click R 90 X and then G and Y. And then we're going to add our empty. So we'll click shift a. We'll add in our empty and then we just need to parent this camera to the empty. So select your camera first, shift select your empty and then click control P and then parent to object keeping transform. So this is very nice because you can just select your empty here and then click S to zoom in. Your camera is going to react with it. You can also double click R. So you see if I click R once, it's just going to do this sort of tilt. But if I double click R, now we have this full 360 degree rotation, which is very nice. Once you have that set up, all you need to do is set some keyframes. So we'll again, select our empty, we'll go over to the object properties and just drag down to set keyframes for all those. Let's drag like 30 frames and then we can start animating this however we want. So I'll click S to zoom in. Once you've made any adjustment, you just want to click I and then click available to lock in all those keyframes. Now you see we've made our little keyframe adjustment. So I can go another 30 frames. This time I'll click R twice and I'll scale out a bit. Click I and then available. You can change the timing for any of these keyframes to smooth out and create the animation however you want. If you want your animation to pause a little bit in between, you can just select the keyframe before, click Control C and then Control V and you'll get a little bit of a pause in the animation. You can have a little bit more custom control so I can click R and then X to only rotate on the X axis. Same with R Y to only tilt to only rotate on the Y and R Z. Another added benefit of doing it this way with the empty, instead of trying to add keyframes to the camera for this, because we started out with the empty, if we do want to add depth of field in our camera options, we're already going to have the focus on object empty set up. You'll see even if the camera zooms in, flies around, changes perspective, you'll see it's always going to keep that empty, which it's parented to in focus, which is pretty nice. If you want to be even more precise with the focusing, whenever you are keyframing, just make sure the origin of this empty is on the surface of whatever of whatever detail you're trying to show because the depth of field and the focusing setup is always going to be pointing to the origins. So you see if I have the empty origin here, there's some blurring on this edge, but if I move the empty to the edge now, we're using that super low F stop, it completely changes. So keep that in mind. And then lastly, I do want to quickly talk about using the graph editor because it is so useful for camera animations. So let me show you how to create an easy little handheld camera animation just using modifiers. You want to first click shift a and add in your camera. We can now position our camera where we'd like, and we want to switch over to the graph editor. So down here in the bottom left, the graph editor is always your best friend. You want to start off by setting keyframes under the object properties. And now you'll be able to see your keyframes popping up here. You just want to expand this box and now you can see all of the different data for the transformations. We're going to go over to one of these rotation values like the Y rotation, for example, and click N on our keyboard. That'll open up these modifiers over here. Let's go to the modifiers panel and you want to add in a noise modifier. So this is the key to getting our shakes and our handheld movement. By default, it's going to be pretty crazy. So you're going to want to scale everything like this. You also want to lower the strength. You can use that step for any of the other camera values. So for example, if you want this camera to be moving towards our subject, we can select the Y location and do the same thing. We'll add in a modifier. We'll add in some noise and then increase the strength. So now just from using some modifiers, we have this simple little handheld movement. This is much easier than doing everything from scratch. And again, depending on the type of shake or the type of movement you want, you can keep adding noise and you can keep changing around your settings. So there are my 10 camera tips and tricks. Hopefully this can be a useful resource for you guys. Whenever you are going in and making your animations and you're stuck, subscribe for more videos and guides like this. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.